How's it going, everyone? Playoffs are among us. This week's episode is gonna be a playoff special, but shall we start the video with some unneeded league toxicity? Of course we should. Alexei Kovalev gets randomly assigned to a bad team, the Drummondville Voltagers, and supposedly asks his team to call him up and wave him so he can play on a good team. How true that story is, I haven't seen proof. I mean, he did send him a goalie, which tells me he had the intention to ECU somewhere, but you could have put him in net for a game and then waved him. Regardless, doesn't matter. They don't do it. So another member of the league, a band member at that, makes a forum post trashing Drummondville's team because they won't let him sneak his way to a good team. One, why is this guy even allowed to make forum posts? He's been banned. He's been muted, what, five times in the last six months? Those are the guys you just kind of go out there, you cut off from your site if you don't want it to look like an absolute cancer fest. I don't think I've ever heard a nice thing come out of the guy's mouth, and it's constantly moving. And just to throw a little disclaimer out there before everybody gets all rattled and bent out of shape is there's going to be chirping in the league. I understand that. People do it every single day, but those people understand there's a line. You don't cross the line. There's a reason they don't get muted, and this guy gets muted what seems like every other day. Apparently, it has hasn't been every other day. It sure feels like it, though. And secondly, when are we going to start doing something about players tampering their way to certain teams? I mean, look at it. He publicly made it known. At least we know why we don't get a lot of owner applications every season, I guess. Smooth, flawless transition, though, here. The Oshawa Generals, Guelph Storm, Brandon Wheat King, Seattle Thunderbirds, Owen Sound Attack, and Moncton Wildcats have all finished the season winning eight or more of their last ten, which is usually a sign that those teams have figured things out and they're feeling pretty confident come playoffs. Now, the Gatineau Olympics, Saskatoon Blades, Shawinigan Cataracts, Barry Colts are all teams currently above 500 that finished the season with three wins in our last 10 games, which is usually a sign of some cracks in a foundation and potentially some problems in a locker room come playoff, which leads us to our next segment of teams who could get upset in the first round. Starting off with the Steelheads versus Kingston. The Steelheads are two seed. Kingston to the seven. It should be a fun one. Now, if Magical Datsuk isn't using his availability as an excuse so he doesn't have to play good teams, then that means one thing. We're going to see him in both games Sunday because that's the only games he can play all week. And ironically enough, it'll be versus Kingston's best player who also can only play Sunday come playoffs in Soto. And I have a really hard time betting against Soto. Datsuk still hasn't proven he can beat good players on a consistent basis. Imagine Kingston up 2 nothing when the series starts. We're going to go bold here and say the Steelheads get swept by the 7th seeded front of sacks. Then we have Prince Albert versus the Medicine Hat Tigers. Oh yes, the 1v8 shocker. The prime Yoda Funhouse line has the ability to beat absolutely anyone if they can win two and six i think they got a shot medicine had has seemingly played down to their opponents quite often this season vase four and five on his season versus non-playoff teams with a two and two record versus red deer and yes I'm very well aware that's overtime losses in there, but sorry, when you lose the Red Deer, losses count as losses, my friends. I feel like if you let Prince Albert feel like they're in these games going into the third night in and night out, they're going to go out there and grow more confident, and they're going to go out there and do the exact same thing they did last season and knock off a 100-point team in the first round, Raiders in seven. As far as the QMJ, I can't really do an upset for the QMJ because the box still haven't posted the bracket as of the recording of this video, and I'm pretty lost on the way this new playoff format set up for a confirmed QMJ this season. But regardless, it looks like a pretty typical QMJ season where the bottom half of the league is pretty meh gets beat up by the higher half of the league all season then you get everyone telling y'all stack the q is but then again when you get to play cape britain and ramuski and halifax and quebec chikutami and charlottetown 25 of your 72 games of the season i mean all you gotta do is go 500 versus the rest of the league to look like a dominant team all that being said besides moncton at the quote-unquote nine seed right now i don't think any of these bottom half teams have a chance to upset one of the top eight Every playoffs needs a nice and lovely Cinderella story. This season, we got two candidates. First off, the London Knights, currently sitting fifth in their conference. And by now, we all know why they're even that high in the conference, and it's the goaltending. Corey's been the best goalie in the league, arguably, all season. And what's crazy is how everyone looks over the fact that Diabolic Viper is a great goalie in his own. We've seen Corey put these insane games in where the chiropractor's literally out there during whistles, mid-game adjusting his back. Not to mention... They won a J-Live sweepstakes, and now they have their best defenseman on TC right now. If Mike plays this smart, he benches himself or someone else in important games and puts Jay in to try and help steal them one. And yeah, you can go out there and bench your bad roster players for some good TCs. Why do you think TC games get reset for the Mem Cup run? That way you can go out there, put those high cap boys in, come games four and five in the finals. Pro tip right there, just don't publicly announce it, of course. I mean, ask Lovey what he knows about that. Oh, but speaking of that, shout out to the league for getting us a seven-game Mem Cup final series this year. Glad to see they found a way to get those games to happen. I know it's really tough for them to fit them all in 
because of how tight the schedule is and everything. So good on them for making that happen. Our second and probably what you would call a true Cinderella story is the Moncton Wildcats. This feels like Moncton's first time in playoffs in years. And Swifty's both a solid team. Three pretty good overlooked forward lines, to be honest. I'm not too confident in the defense, but the one thing I've learned about the Q is most teams don't have shutdown D-men, meaning their forwards do have a chance to flourish. If there is going to be one road bump, it would be the Sea Dogs. So I believe they'll see, what, in the second round, if I'm understanding this new QMJ format correctly, they'll see them. Then they'll see the Titan in the third round. So they have a gauntlet to run, but I do think they can handle whoever they play in conference finals if I am somewhat understanding this conference playoff format correctly definitely a tall task ahead though but it's something i think they can possibly reach and i think we got to end this sucker with some mem cup finals predictions rarely do we see the mem cup final filled with three teams that are all number one seeds and this season we're going back to a four team finals if you guys have not heard there will be four teams but the fourth team literally is randomly selected from the final 12 teams in the playoffs i believe so we're going to go out there and stick with just predicting three teams the winners of each conference in this video starting in the ohl with the owen sound attack deceptive's been there done that for seasons now when it comes around the playoffs i don't see anyone in their conference stopping them until conference finals and the favorite to play them in conference finals is those bulldogs as of right now a team they're three and one versus this season the owen sound defense it's just too dominant for me to bet against it frustrates teams to a fault and more importantly it's going to carry them to a mem cup appearance i think in the whl we have the brandon wheat kings yes sir not the vancouver giants vancouver is everyone's favorite to win the mem we've seen far too many times where the overhyped favorite gets upset before the mem cup rounds i don't know who does it maybe the royals bring in some old friends to help them win a few maybe brandon beats them but brandon has the best top two d pair lines in the whl right now in my opinion i don't think they have near the offensive firepower as a lot of these teams do but it's as easy as it is to play defense this year at least everybody says the defense in the chl has been very weak and that's why i think these defensive teams are going to strive even more than ever because they'll shut down teams and e is going to find a way to trickle in a few further forwards whether they're good or not when you're dominating puck possession you're going to get a couple of trick in there it just happens in this game this year finally out of the qmj is the st john z dogs the sea dogs arguably have the most complete team in the entire chl their defense is lights out their forwards have played very well top to bottom their goalies have been playing lights out and they've only allowed 1.77 goals per game this season and they've scored 3.4 per game I know I said Moncton could be a Cinderella story, but I don't know if anyone has a chance in the Q versus these guys. I think there's a lot of teams that can go line for line on the offensive side. Moncton, Arcady, Sherbrooke, but I don't think any of those guys had the defensive firepower to go line for line against these guys. And we could potentially see some lopsided wins out of the Sea Dogs as a result. Of those three teams, I'm not going to pick one I think that's going to win the Mem Cup. I'm never a big fan of trying to say which conference is better than the other. You guys don't play each other all season. There's no arguments you can really make to say this conference is better than this one just because of on paper they're better. So we're just going to stick with those three. Otherwise, though, for this week's episode, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.